Welcome to another episode uh, in our series of Destination History and uh, we welcome back today a uh, lifelong Newry resident uh, and uh, for indeed former North Street man Eamon McAteer and you're very welcome back Eamon. Thanks James, I want to just up and let, I'm going to let you into a secret. I am a Newry man but uh, unfortunately I wasn't born in Newry. Circus, circumstances led that uh, when Pen my arrival, my father could not get anything to live in Europe, and he was born in Dublin. But that's a secret, I'm a day man. Very good, very good. Well, Eamon, um, we're going to talk today about uh, a few names that uh, have disappeared uh, from the local area, and places indeed that you're well familiar with. And I was thinking there, if we just start at at the the uh, at the base of the Dublin Road, the junction of Dominic Street, uh, we have people would say it's still there, uh, younger people, Pool Lane. But of course, the Pool Lane that me and you know or remember is long gone. Indeed, and I have happy memories of Pool Lane. They live in chickens. The famous Johnny Burns. They worked in Fisher Street. There's a maritime connection there over on the bicycle. And as you remember, James, there's steep incline. You couldn't, no cars could get up Pool Lane. You had your hair family, big family, small house, something that was repeated right through the town. But turn out places that disappeared. You, you mentioned me yesterday evening I would have something and you were talking about the North Street. Um, but no, I want to spread a bit more over. I started to think. Of I grew up in a, what I would call a living town. Now, by a living town, I mean every street someone lived in. Now, coming over here, I parked the car in Dunn's car park. Now, that was the creamery, and beside the creamery was uh, McGovern's. And just when I said Nancy McGovern's, there was an old friend of mine, a former workmate in BQ, who died last night. Noel Connell and Noel Connell started his working life in McGovern's and in our time in being cool, he told me many stories of experiences. McGovern's, like Fairy Larkins over in Dominic Street, sold meal, at a bar, general grocery shop and everything. There was also a street there between, uh, it wasn't really a street but I can't, uh, at the moment I can't remember the name of it, but between also going to live in Ellis's Row. No, no, that wasn't. I don't think it was Alice's role. It just can't. It just can't come to mind. But having said that, the manager of the creamery lived in the house. It was a house there for the manager, Morgan Street. Opposite that, you had Lavery Shop, and Lavery's also lived in Morgan Street. I think the Bailey family lived in Morgan Street. I remember Frank Howard's aunt, Miss Golden, who we used to visit regular, and she was a great storyteller. She lived in McNamee's. Drapers, they lived over the sh shop or behind the shop, and I started me thinking that the, there's nowhere now, there's nowhere except there's, I think there's two residents in Mountain Street now. This top end was our, Mike and Lynn's lived over the bakery, Shawnee Garland lived over the barber shop, you had Brady's Vegetable Shop, and you had John McParney and family next door, where uh, I think a motor. A seriously place now. All those. And even the plane on the street. There's no plane on the street now. So you go back over to, as you say, my favourite area, North Street. Market Street's gone. Market Square, as you know, you and I were out in Bally Hill doing a presentation. And we told the story. I'm not telling the story here. But, uh, I mentioned Market Square. And nobody knew where it was. Mm -hmm. It actually was where the gates into the convent school is now. Yeah. And that's another thing, where you're at the convent, the nuns aren't living in High Street Convent now, they're out in our school. They're out in school. The Christian brothers are gone out of Castle Street. There's only one house in, well, no, there's, uh, there's three houses in Castle Street. Uh, now I'm back to a long, a long time resident, and unfortunately her sister-in-law, Mary died about a month ago. And just on that point, Behind Stephen Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick's, 
Back it here is cat cattle. The cattle were taken down from the fields and barrier home in the winter and uh, were put in the back of uh, the shop. And there's a sweet shop there. It's gone. The other side of the road, you had the Nolans, the, the, the dancers, you had McDonald's. And so that means my McDonald's, Jimmy McDonald's, just the day, just last week. Mm. You had the Cabbage Pub. And you had the famous McCann's Baker. It's gone. You had the lower three houses, but beside uh, St. Coleman's Hall. There you had uh, the Bannons, the Garments, and the. Uh, popcorn. And the popcorn, they lived for up opposite the Sacred Heart Gate. The Sacred Heart's gone. It's out in Ashgrove. Now. And now, Eamon, just, just, you've given us a, 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 a plethora of information there. Uh, to get back to McAteer's, they they actually had a dairy. They had a dairy. I've seen the bottle recently. I remember Jerry delivering milk in my memory and the uh, happy memories of uh, coming in to Uncle Sean and in the house street to be paid for the, the week's milk. I'm just on that now. I'm not going political, but I was thinking this morning of Ruth Tones Watch or United Catholic Protestant DeSanta. Now, truthfully, in 29 North Street, Catholic, Protestant and the Santa were united, and also Jews, because we had customers of all persuasions, and they were quite welcome, there was no far lights. My grandfather, my grandfather said there was a steel about the length of that there, and my grandfather besides that, and he had the various treasures, R.C. Spence, Harry Butterfield, who had been the manager of McCallum's, Bakery and they all, and that's kind of where I got half my information. In those days, children were tolerated if they'd be, they'd be quiet. And that's another thing going back. How I know about the streets empty, and you remember uh, what do you call them in Dominic Street uh, with the ice cream? Harry Galloway. Harry Galloway. Like, we would go as we weren't the only ones, uh, Sunday walk. And you'd be asked, where do you want, where way do you want to go? Now it was a choice, because you tried to pick a route where it was a shop or something like that. Yeah. It was ice cream yeah. one week, maybe in the Florentine, the following week in Harry Galloway's. Yes. And probably met you because there's an affinity with you and our mayor born the same day. And we're probably, going back, we probably, everybody was out walking. And then, of course, your mother was in Chapel Street, and we had the Chapel Street connection. Mm -hmm. like those days are gone, you don't see families out now, it's Sunday shopping now, but there was works, there's... Yeah, well, just not breaking a conversation, but um, just to let the, the, the viewers uh, uh, know and, and for the, to remind some of people who, who may have forgotten, um, tell us about Father Murphy's works. In the, uh, Father Murphy and the Dominican. Well, I wasn't really a Dominican Catholic. I don't. I only heard about them, but I believe they were great. Yeah. Father Murphy, the altar boys. Well, Father Murphy. Ron Han, Father think. Murphy had a had had a model aircraft. He was a great model mm. for for all sorts of gadgets. Like he introduced the ducks. The, 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 the crib. crib was wonderful. And that was an all walk around. And that was the, the, all the animals that. They they had everything. The ducks the head. head. The fox. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the camels away in the distance, and uh, I think he got ahead of his time. For he was well. I think he got his idea from the Dominicans had what they call. Oh, I never got to see it in Parnell Square in Dublin. What they call the moving trip, and I think he got his idea. But Father Murphy was a wonderful man. He was a long time in your And then you're bringing back the memories. Father Haggerty, different that. It is, uh, you know, of course, about the, the Pierce altar in the Dominican. Yeah, the side altar. altar. Yeah, a lot of people in here don't know. But I think Pier Pierce may have been in here. My grandfather talked about a mass meeting in 1918, the Sinn Féin, on Steve Gordon. And I'm not sure where my grandfather was at it, although he was a Republican in. His outlook, but I'm not sure whether he ever joined any organisations. But uh, I remember a man called Ned Murphy who lived up beside the Blue Motion. 
And I don't know why you remember how Sonny called from Sir James or not, because I'm a bit older than you. But he used to have the donkey up Courtney Hill with, I don't know, maybe 20, 30, 30 gallons of power from because up there you had no electricity. And just touching on that, if you don't mind me saying, uh, the tragedy in Annalong last week brought my mind because my younger days, an awful lot of people were joining quarries. I remember uh, a wee schoolmate from the primary school, uh, PJ McCavitt. Yes, PJ was from O'Neill Avenue. And PJ was drowned. But I I'm can go, I can go a, a wee bit further back on a date. Clearly, you were about two year old when it happened. Because I remember, our Mary was in the go kart. It happened on the Monday night before the horror show. Tom Fran. Now Tom Fran was in my class in school. We were, we were eleven year old. I distinctly remember Mr. Hanover, who was class we'd been in in the primary, warning us to be careful on the previous Friday when we got a, a house. He didn't think we had been standing in the avenue on that Tuesday at a funeral. And I distinctly, I have a fear of water. I never learned to swim because I can still see Tom Fran's body being carried past our house and the water dripping out of it. was then, cutties were hard then, the trainers now. And I never forgot that, and I had a f have a fear of water from that. Although I shouldn't have, because my mother was from Bay. I went to Bay. Yes, I was buried in the feet of my enemy before, but I never learned to swim. And was Tom drowned in the quarry as well? He was drowned in the quarry behind St Mary's School. And Sean O'Hanlon, who's still alive, Sean O'Hanlon made a bid to try and save him. But that quarry was very, very deep. I remember that evening, people came from all over the town. I don't know what for, but it was like a football match in Neil Avenue. And I see also that Alec Atwood was is at the council should drain quarries. They did, about a month after Tom Farrell was drowned, the father did, did come up and they did drain somewhere over, but not enough. I hadn't not, I wouldn't go up there. I don't know why there's still water in it or not. I remember the lad McLachlan being drowned up in the blue ocean. I can't put a date on that, but I always had a fear. I never would go near the quarries. And then Paddy McCann uh, talked about the party was the talking about the Casey that got down in the basin. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I was swimming. I would say uh, it's a big change in the area with the swimming pool. They're complaining about how they stay of it, but at least there's nobody going, not the main army's going swimming in yeah. quarries now, or the county river. That was another place. Mm. But the quarries are mainly where people were drowned. Very, very dangerous. Very, very, and last weekend, as you say, a uh, very, very sad tragedy. Yeah. Um, two lives lost, you know. And the young man for day same has happened. Just, hap when, just when we were talking there, Eamon, about uh, the basin, um, I was just thinking about uh, Jack Hutchinson living in the, the Lockmaster's cottage. Yes, I know he was passed it many a time because Uncle Sean used to take the field along, well, the, the road in the field, the bank of the river mm. for grazing, and over the railway line, I remember the railway line was there then, the station was going well. Uh, what's the, who, this was in, in Dublin Bridge, it was there, no, I can't think, the name would come back to me, but there was, ha I was happy memories. I told you that when I go on the, on the talks with you to the school with that, I talk about Henry Woody and Robert Dixon driving the cattle. Yeah. I had I had many a time drove cattle, not, a, not to the quantity of the day, did, but it used to be great when uh, land would be taken. Land was taken down at uh, the Father Main. And it was great to drive the cattle and go down to the edge to make sure they went down straight. And a nice plant, I thought that was great. And I haven't been beast, it never happened. 
but when I grew up, I wanted to save the catalog, but it never happened. Well, um, when you talked about, uh, again, to get back to the shop, and many people will, will remember the, 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 the your grandfather's shop, although my memory is of your Uncle Sean and uh, before he went to Mary mm -hmm. State. But how, what, how, how far ranging was the was the, the business hinterland of that shop? Here? Well, pre partition, I took in the uh, Cooley Peninsula. Uh, my grandfather. Pre partition? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pre partition, there was maybe up, I was led to believe, uh, maybe 10, 15. When men lads working in North Street, they were signing, hey, they do believe in pigeons, but Danny Fitzpatrick, Aaron Fitzpatrick's father used to go on the Cooley run and he would buy in Cooley. And then he would also go out to Benick and I'd run there. No, he was involved in the national movement and he was on hunger strike in. Uh, Crumlin Road in 1917 and when he was in, uh, in jail uh, all our dealers, th th dealers went out around Bannock you know where the type, I don't like taking sectarianism in but uh, there are many Protestants, Presbyterians out there that buy a file and that Fitzpatrick was in jail he not be out but those people managed to take the well, the hard horse and charge themselves, they took the file into North Street. Now, in North Street, if you imagine now, you can see where, where the car park is, the back's in North Street. No, 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 back to St. Clair's Avenue. Mm. Now, all in North Street, there's various animals, cat, pigs, cattle, chickens, ducks. On our side of the street, you had uh, James Conley. He was a councillor. He worked in Crilly's butcher shop, but he kept pigs next to where Gallagher's or Taylor's originally were facing Tom McAnulty's. And even Gallagher's had kept them in through the side into the yard. Now just to give just to give people a perspective of even of where we're talking about relative to today, roughly where where the car park. The the present car park in North Street, yeah. where the flats were knocked down. That area, all that was, you have still the outline of uh, the old North Street with the path. Now, just on an instant thing about the path, we were in Kinkeel at the North Centre, and I flicked through a book, and I seen a word in print for the first time that was regularly used in Europe, but not used now, the cribbing. That's right, yeah. But it's not where I use the perfect ki King's English now. Uh, the cribbing was a car, but you yeah. know. Yeah. And it was the first time I seen it actually in print. And it was, well, in, in the book, it was the cribbing and the sats. So the cribbing was the, the word that the, the stone cutters used to destroy that for the snow the car. The ground is set, yeah. yeah. And at that time, Eamon, when, when your grandfather was there, when you when you came to be about the shop, you would have been dispatched by your grandfather to collect fowl, etc. Well, the Duke bag me up the St. Clair's Avenue, St. Patrick's Avenue, and go in and catch three or four hens. What, 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 what would happen was they would bury them as pullets, free yeah. laying. Yeah. And they would dry them, and when they were finished laying, get rid of them and repeat them. So, the uh, process. I also. Uh, now, would your grandfather have supplied the pullets, or would they buy them? No, no uh, most most time, uh, well, they, they would come through the shop, as it did Dennis Carvel, that owned uh, McGee's hardware shop. He used to do the same. And I don't know, you remember Newell's? Yeah. And most of you really left po pullets and collected. Hands from your your years was a, a unique tenure in a sense. They were had a branch in Royal Avenue in Belfast, and they also had a branch in Grafton Street in Dublin, which is the best of my knowledge. At least it was. I haven't been in, in 
Grafton Street for a few years, but the Pleasant Down stores beside what was HMV, which was railroads before we said the was Newell's, and you could still see the eight lane of Newell. They were doing and then just to get back on that track, Foster's. I am talking about people living in the town. I remember in my time because we were living there in Water Street and High Street, you see the bus stop out on the High Street, I didn't pass the Downshire Court through the cathedral. Mm -hmm. Some of the staff and Foster's were living over Foster's store. That was pre Foster's coffee lunch. Now there was somewhere over there and I heard somebody talking about it was the that was the in place after school if you had money was first as coffee yeah. range. Yeah. I can't remember where we well, were. Well, worked there and uh Jeannie worked there when she left school and the manager S was a lady from Bestbrook called Gertie Black. Uh, yeah. Well everybody was welcome and there was as I said earlier, everybody mixed. There was no sectarians near girls from right, the high school, which was not out the road then. It was on what we, I would call the Belfast Road, where the education officers now. Yep. We all mixed, we all met there, uh, and we all had fun. And fallen, the Florentine. And the Florentine. And uh, girls were known, if they had handbags, to go to satellite, buy a Coke, half Tommy put it in the bag and try and slip into the Florentine and put the, bo the bottle on the, on the counter. Uh, on the re in, in the east. The, the, the Florentine was great with the snugs. Yeah, that's right. And and it was, as you say, it was the, the in place for the crack. So uh, if you had the entrance fee, the bottle of coke yeah, or whatever it was. But you know, have to mention the name and Tommy Burns. And Tommy was a real entrepreneur wasn't he? Tommy was. Tommy, I remember Tommy with the bike, push bike with a fridge, a uh, fridge yep. in front and his favourite spot was the tennis court. That was another place for a walk on a Sunday. Now just when we met in the tennis court, we, we, we no, didn't have, I know knowledge what tennis was but we went down and watched and there was a, uh, what do you call it, with the mallet. Crokey. Crokey. <laughs> Fetch on the day we played, played that. I heard Prince Charles talking about it. Uh, well, uh, you could have played in it. It was now known as a new Catholic tennis court. That's right. And uh, you could go in and play croquet. There was a wooden building. There's no no trace with now. And then when it was you... A green, it was green like a... Like a a green pavilion. on your right. Yeah, it was yeah. a green pavilion. And then on your right it, you had the croquet. Pitch. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there would be tournaments, and it was like in many women with the raised platform for the umpire. But yeah. then on our way home, the only loving you slip into the graveyard and along the wall to find the balls. But they were never, the tennis balls were never given back. They were used maybe to play a hole in the handball. That's another thing there. I think you remember people playing handball against the high rock wall. There's no, like, it's all right now with these g electric games and that, but I don't think children have any, any life like compared to we have. No. I feel, I, I go out cycling, right, they, they go cycling, that's the thing on the, on the point road. There was a race every year, it's still going on, but it, it's not publicised now because you only see the results with the tour of the moments. And you remember the bridge over the road with, with the long, Walked right down the park after. Yeah, yeah. That bank would be packed on the Sunday of the terrible morning, and the race probably start around half one, maybe finish half four, four o'clock, half four. And we would sit down there to the end, from the start to the end, there'd be a bit of crack on that, and there'd be cyclists coming. But famous just I tell you, you will remember Joe Conway. Remember Joe and Drummond Lane? You remember Joe well. Uh, Joe was the caretaker up in the convent, but Joe did a bit of cycling, and somebody gave Joe a bit of advice to save his wind for Hill Street, making him pass coming down Hill Street. Patrick got the Lord of and he said he was on the other side, the Monaghan Burris. There's somebody you want to interview, Brian Monaghan. Brian Monaghan raced on the convent, on Dermot. The Dermot's back in Newry, he'd been out in Newry 
for many, many years and suddenly one day when I was in Vane Q, who was in front of me only time in Monaghan. Ross Titan, I remember Ross Titan, the first Ross Titan, a stage finish outside Conan's house on the by far so old entry I wrote it is and it had a bit the children had a big following. You'd be supposed there'd be hundreds. There's all the races finished out of the ice trees and we walk out the ice trees on home. It was a good step out from when they left the ice trees. Mm. And there's nobody walking there at all. There's nobody walking there. We had various walks. We had the Bluebell Woods out the commons. You had over the Moor Hill. You had uh, then you'd cross the other side, the town and up Watson's Road, or the Chancellor's Road, up the Clog and back. And I remember my mother pushing me in the pram, or one day and one of us would take a turn. I remember when we went back to school in September for the first week or so, we were met, we would head, all head to North Street, and would be a walk out to Belfast Road or something before we went home. Well, I was I was just driving up the uh, driving up the bypass the other evening, Liam, and I was just thinking back uh, to the time when that was all more or less Indian country up the Burnish, Altnave, okay. uh, you know, and now that road just sways through the middle of it. It's, 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 it's the I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would, the boundary for the town, really. I would be afraid to go. I was on the Barnish recently in the car, but I suppose I went to build a naked garden from school. And we walked, he went into the shop early from school. He was taken out of school, he went into the shop, and we had to a half day, and you remember. And then it came, became the whole day off. But either the Barnish or Craig Moore, we walked. Craig Moore, if we went Canal Street, you got end of ten minutes on the way up. If you went Monument Street, you called ten minutes on the way back. James, you're bringing back memories. I could go on and on about thing the milk, uh, not milk the day. What do you call it? The uh, Sundays in, in ten minutes. It's ten, ten minutes is still going. It's one of the few places that are still going. But then, before my time, Places had an ice cream shop in Milk Street, which is Milk Street's gone. Mm -hmm. I said earlier, and I'm going to throw one at you. I said the other day, I learned by incident, by accident, uh, told my mom, Paddy Hannan, and he came up with a Princess Towers. Yeah, that and would be that would be some question for a competition, even. I had never even heard of that place. Well, they, well, well they, uh, let them know I will keep them guessing their future date. I think it would be, it, it'd be cruel to keep people hanging on that length of time. Tell them where it was. Explain where it was, Eamon. It was, I remember the man where the steam laundry was, which also was, uh, became Alfie Matthews, if they remember Alfie Matthews. Alfie and Nora and opposite John Magapin's yeah, shop. shop. Well, uh, uh, Princess House was uh, originally behind those houses. Mm -hmm. There were six houses. One little pile went to where Mickey Matthews lived at the foot of Dorrance Hill, the old Dorrance Hill, in that area. Uh, was Princess Towers, but then should have really known because you had Queen Street and you King Street. Yeah. Now I, I earlier said to you, I asked you a question, where King Street North was. And I thought it was not an area. Up above Gavigan's mm -hmm. and the railway yeah, gates in King Street. Yeah. But it wasn't there. No, it was in the other end of the town, up off Cairns uh, Street, as if you were going into the uh, Greenfield Park, the lower part of the left, was a row for maybe a dozen single story houses with the usual outdoor toilet and probably and dry toilets. Just when we mentioned Alfie Matthews, Alfie was quite a character. He 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 had a he had a wee farm. He had a wee farm. Uh, <laughs> a good man of these. I remember him coming up to Quinn Bennett 
on the part of the land when we lived in the new lobby at the Bajoran farm. And I was amazed that this man would cover nuts and hats and all, and he, he was great with the bees. That's the thing there. Uh, first, he, there's a, a disease in the bees. Oh, uh, he'll see that, yeah. Up and yeah. The Queen Bannock kept bees. Alfie kept bees. I'm not sure who else kept bees, but I remember the uh, honey coming in the old sections to my grandfather in the house to his presence. I can't recall who brought them in, but there's one way to see the, the uh, honey in the section. And the country puppet came in too. Uh, people wouldn't probably know now if you mention country puppet, which the farmer's wife made for her own few pants. Chorn and chorn and he used to say, tell the story and not be the first to be seen chorn and let somebody else start or There was a story I can't remember if I used to tell those. Somebody in Ballyhoe and they were having a problem getting the both of the saddle and uh, they were talking to somebody and they were told they could go down to the old country. Now where do you think the old country is from there? Well, the low ground. The low country. The low country. Round and and Sinmanuri. And the land. Uh, no, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a distance from Yuri, but quite a hospital from Yuri, in a way. It's close to the little tiny county down, referring on the hill, below... Uh, and looking out for the Mara. Actually, yeah, between the uh, refrain and the dip in the refrain and uh, Castle Run. Yes. And we were sent down there to see some person, I'm not sure who man or woman, but they told them uh, not to start chewing until they seen the first smoke, but not to have the smo first smoke themselves. And they did, they cut up early on the river, protect the day for the chewing on the way they seen the first smoke, which was not there, and started to join and everything went well. Oh, very good. Well, Eamon, on that note, and, and just thinking that the postman in Yuri won't be going to King Street North or presentation... Princess. 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 You'll get that right sometime. Princess Terrace, is it? Princess Place. Place. And then... Normark Street, Normark Square. Or Orchard Gardens. Or Orchard Gardens, indeed. Still, do, still have Penguin Place. I wonder how it ever got the name Penguin Place. Maybe someone will phone in and tell us or whatever. If you know how Penguin Place got its name, answers on a postcard, please, Damon. Damon, thanks very much as ever. I really enjoyed that. Well, you. And, you and, you and uh, you awakened some old memories there. Well, you really did this to you when you said to me, asked me to come over and do this. I started to think, and as my father used to say, it's dangerous when you start to think because you never knew <laughs> what might happen. Eamon, <laughs> thanks very much. Yes. Thank you.